In this section, we are going to discuss about MVC. MVC stands for Model, View and Controller. MVC is nothing but a design pattern for developing professional web applications. There are a few advantages of using MVC design pattern. It separates presentation logic, business logic and controller logic from each other. It also helps in code maintainability and code reusability. There are two types of MVC architecture models. First one is Model 1, which is also known as JSP Model 1 or page centric approach. And second one is Model 2, which is also known as JSP Model 2 or sublet centric approach. As far as our application development is concerned, we are going to use sublet centric approach. Let's discuss about our MVC application. Our MVC application contains one Java view class that is user.java and this class will act like a model. Our JSP pages will act like views and these are entry.jsp and result.jsp. Our process servlet will act like a controller. We are going to divide our application development into four simple steps. In step 1, we are going to create one entry.jsp page which will act like a view. It contains a few HTML tags. First one is form tag. Form tag contains two attributes. First one is method. The value of method attribute is post. And second one is action. The value of action attribute is process which is pointing to our process servlet. It contains three hardcoded text labels as first name, last name and email and three text fields for three hardcoded text labels. These three text fields are having values for their name attributes as capital first name, capital last name and capital email mentioned in blue. This page also contains one submit button. Now let's move to our step 2. In this step we are going to create one Java Bean class that is user.java and this class will act like a model. This user class is used to store user information. This class contains three properties which are first name, last name and email which are uh, mentioned in camel case. Two constructors, first one is default constructor and second one is parameterized constructor and this class also contains a few getters and setters. We have three properties which are mentioned in camel case and six getters and setters for our three properties. Now let's move to our step 3. In this step we are going to create one servlet that is process servlet and this servlet will act like a controller. We are going to divide our servlet development into five parts. In first part we are going to extract the information from entry.jsp page. For that we need to call a method with request object that is request.get parameter. In braces, we need to provide the value of name attribute and the text fields mentioned in entry.jsp. These are capital first name, capital last name, capital email on the right hand side of equal symbol and we are going to assign the extracted values to java strings which are camel case on the left hand side of equal symbol. These java strings are temporary strings. In second part, we are going to instantiate our user object with the help of default constructor. In third part, we are going to call setter methods with the help of user object and assign the extracted values stored in temporary Java strings as arguments of setter methods. In fourth part, we are going to call a method with request object that is request.set attribute. This method takes two arguments. First one is a string that is user and second one is an object. In our case a user object. This method will set a user object into request scope so that we can retrieve our user object back from request scope in some other resource with the help of request.get attribute method. Fifth part we need to call a method with request object. Request.get request dispatcher in braces we need to provide our resource name. Call to this method will give us a request dispatcher object. With the help of this object, we can forward a client request to a resource. This call will forward a request from current servlet to another resource like a servlet or a JSP or an HTML on the server. In our case, our resource is result.jsp. Now we are going to call dispatcher.forward method. This method allows one servlet to do some preliminary processing of a request and another resource to generate response. In our case, our resource is result.jsp. Now let's discuss about the first part of process servlet in more detail. In this part, 
we are extracting the information from entry.jsp page and we are assigning the extracted information to java strings In order to activate our process servlet, we need to provide some configurations and perp.xml deployment descriptor. We are going to divide our deployment descriptor into three parts. In the first part, we are going to write one servlet tag. This servlet tag contains two more tags. First one is servlet name and second one is servlet class. We are going to choose any arbitrary servlet name, but in our case, our servlet name is process. Servlet class tag contains full qualified class name without Java extension. Second part contains servlet mapping tag and this servlet mapping tag contains two more tags. First one is servlet name and second one is URL pattern. The value of servlet name is process which is same as the value of servlet name under servlet tag discussed above and value of URL pattern is slash process. With the help of this uh, URL pattern we can access our servlet. That's why the value of action attribute in entry.jsp page is process without a slash. In third part, we are going to mention a welcome file. Welcome file is served whenever we access our application with context path. In our case, our welcome file is entry.jsp. Whenever we access our application by specifying context path, output of entry.jsp is displayed to us. Now let's move to our step 4 which is result.jsp which will act like a view in our MVC application. Result.jsp contains three parts. In first part, we need to provide a proper import for our user class. In second part, under scriptlets, we are extracting the value of user object from request scope. This can be achieved by calling a method that is um, get attribute and quotes we need to specify the name of our object. We are going to call this method with request object. Call to request.get attribute will return an object. We need to cast the returned object to get a user object. In third part, with the help of expressions, we are going to call getter methods with the help of user object. This is the output of our entry.jsp page. This is the output of our result.jsp page.